So about a year back, it was the start of the pandemic, and I made the decision to learn Apple AR development. And it was one of the best decisions I've made. Because today, after graduating, it's generating me clients. I've got now Apple AR clients that I'm using to fund my side projects. And I've got this YouTube channel now, which is growing day by day, that I've used to document my journey and my learnings. I believe this decision to learn Apple AR development will give me a lot of opportunities 10 years down the line when the metaverse and all that stuff starts becoming more and more ingrained into our societies. So I'm really excited about this video today because I'm going to take you through the step by step the process I used to learn Apple AR development a year back. To give a bit of a background, I did have previous programming experience. So I was doing my PhD, I used a lot of MATLAB, high level coding languages, I knew a bit of Java programming and all that. But most of these skills I learned on the spot, like when I needed it. So I didn't really have strong fundamentals. And fundamentals I believe are very important because it lets you be more creative and gives you less constraints to work with. So what I did because of that was I decided to take an entire course and complete it from start to finish so I'll be good at the fundamentals. And for this reason, the first step I took in my journey to learning Apple AR development, this was at the start of the pandemic literally, was to learn iOS development. I learned it not through tutorials, videos and articles here and there, but through a wonderfully organized course by Angela Yu, the complete iOS development bootcamp. This was such a wonderful course. I can genuinely, genuinely recommend it because I've personally used it, as you can see on the screenshot here, and I know the value it has given me. So I think I paid about like $30, $40 back then, and today the return on that $30, $40 in hard cash is more than 10K in client revenue I've had. So I can honestly, honestly recommend it to you. So I use this course not to learn the AR bit, but to learn the fundamentals of building an iOS app. Swift programming language, laying out UI elements, table views, iOS specific native UI, how to use that. New, new frameworks like Swift UI, which lets you build user interfaces faster, more reusable ways, and fetching data from the web through different API endpoints, and persisting data locally and on the cloud in service like AWS and Firebase or cloud, cloudless servers. So all this stuff, it's a well-rounded, well-rounded course. I highly recommend it for the fundamentals. In addition to that, it also has advanced topics like AR and Core ML, but I did not really use this course for that. I'll tell you why. So the reason I didn't use it to learn AR is because and it doesn't really cover Reality Kit and all the new frameworks available now. So I'll come to the how I learned the AR bit later on. This course I really, really used to learn the fundamentals. So I am going to include a link to this course down in my description and my uh, comments below. I, I'm going to make a disclaimer here saying that this is an affiliate link, which means if you click on it and buy it, I will get a commission on it. And I am very, very comfortable promoting this course as an affiliate link because I genuinely benefited from it and I know you will too if you're interested in this part. That's why I'm promoting it. I do not ever promote products that I don't have confidence in. Just a while back, I remember I got a offer of 4K, 4,000 pounds, which is quite, quite a bit of money to promote a crypto scheme, a crypto wallet. And I did not even reply to that email. But during that time, I had no interest or no knowledge about the crypto community, so I would not promote something just for the money. And the reason is because I know I will lose in the long term. This channel is for the long term, it's for 10 years down the line. And if I want to gain your trust, I will need to provide you stuff that I believe in and I know it will be valuable to you. That's just a long-winded way of saying, trust me, this is good, and make up your mind and do, do buy. So in addition to that, I also want to mention how long did this stage take learning iOS development through this course. It took me about one to two months doing it part-time. So that's the time range if you want an estimate of the time it takes. So for the AR bit, I branched out and used other channels. AR bit is quite different from making 2D apps. 2D apps, iOS apps, there's one way of building it. There's the UI is in 2D and it's all 2D text, table views and all that. But AR, it's all in 3D. Spatial programming. You have to learn about anchors, planes, placing objects, uh, moving objects, 3D geometry, and all that stuff. So 3D programming was something new. So for the AR bit, the way I learned it was through outside sources. So this was mostly free resources like YouTube channels. Great channels include ones by Ryan Kopinski, which is purely focused on Reality Kit. There's Dilmer Bellisillos. He does a lot of AR, mostly Unity-based tutorials. Great channel too. And there's Max Fraser's articles online. 
he does great Apple AR tutorials. So yeah, I used a combination of all these uh, resources to build up my AR skills. I didn't spend too long like building up tutorial projects and all that. I spent a little bit of time, about a month or a half. But after that, I immediately moved on to building actual projects. Once you have the fundamentals, a little bit of that ready, you need to start building and filling in the rest of the gaps through the problems you face while building apps. So to avoid this tutorial purgatory, I jumped into building my own apps. And these were not just uh, apps I wanted to build for the sake of it. I also had a business mindset so to market the app, how, what, what apps would have demand. I started thinking about it. So kind of with an entrepreneurial mindset, I started building apps so that I could hit two birds in one shot focus on my business skills and at the same time build code and learn along the way. But during this time I also realized that it would not just help to build, I'm learning so much through this process. I need to leverage that learnings and make it work for me in other ways. And that's when I decided that I need to start documenting my journey online in a YouTube channel. That's when I started this YouTube channel to document my journey and this process. You can see like in my early videos a lot of them were tutorials and projects that I built and now you can see like why I did that because those were apps that I was going to build anyway to learn Apple AR development and by just recording it on a video and sharing it those apps are now generating me a lot of views so in addition to the skills that I gained these are generating as marketing vehicles right now which has been so effective in my client work so you can see a lot of these things you can hit two more than two birds in one shot so by building projects, I not only started coding, building and learning, but I also started selling and marketing and building my online presence. I'm so, so glad I did that. I'm so glad I did that because it has provided me so much leverage after I graduated and it's made life a lot more easier today. So videos is like a hardcore way of doing it. It's the most effective in my opinion because you build the most personal connection with the audience. Um, the audience just keeps growing over time and it just keeps getting better and better. If you don't want to put that much effort into audience building, you can also choose channels like Twitter and it's very popular among the dev community. So Twitter is an easier way to do it and there's Instagram. It's all up to your taste.